Hi, good evening. It is Saturday, August 29th, just after midnight, and I've published a new article for you this week. It's entitled The Trumpet Blast and First Fruits Offering Across the River. It deals with the people of Israel being prepped by Moses to cross the river under Joshua and enter into the Promised Land where the glory of the Lord will come down. And the timing of this reading of this Torah portion was prescribed by the prophet Ezra who had a designated Torah portion to be read in the synagogue each Sabbath and this Torah portion uh, is dealing with the crossing over which for us will be a crossing over from earth into heaven. It's being followed by an awakening trumpet blast uh, that is music to our ears, watching for the rapture as well. And the announcement of the people's first fruits offering unto the, Levi, the Levites, the Levitical priests, in addition to the glory of the Lord coming. So the article is written from the understanding that Pentecost fully come is still open. It will be concluded for the bride at the moment of the rapture. But the first fruits themselves could actually be offered until Sukkot. So, if we look at the heavenly signs, they match these Torah readings from Deuteronomy 26 and Isaiah 60 exactly. I'm going to go through them rather quickly and invite you to read uh, the article yourself. So, this portion deals with the storm Laura and we see the moon having just crossed her own fiery river the fiery stream in the book of Daniel chapter 7 to then meet up with the king planet Jupiter a type of Boaz and then meet up with Saturn tomorrow afterwards so we see a picture of Ruth having crossed the fiery river at the time of the conclusion of the harvests and the onset and start of the grape harvest exactly the time where we would expect Ruth, Ruth and Boaz to be married. So here you can find a portion on the Milky Way being Daniel's fiery stream. It is found in the seventh book of Daniel chapter 10 which deals with judgment, a passing on the derod of the shepherd, our works being tried by fire, and also a picture of the throne room and the wedding picture to Messiah. And this is, this is exactly what the moon is embodying this weekend. So the next uh, portion of the heavens is what is happening in the sun. Um, we see a picture of the lion heart. The sun, the bridegroom, is currently at Leo's chest section as he releases portion of fury, fierce CMEs, trampling the enemy beneath him. That is Hydra, the crooked serpent, or Leviathan, as noted in Isaiah 26 and Genesis 3.15. And although it is still carrying strong rays, the hottest or dark days of summer in Israel are ending. And the vintage grape harvest is at its height. Uh, Mercury, the messenger, the groomsman, goes ahead of the sun, is situated between Leo's hind feet on the exact same day that John the Baptist beheading his death at the hands of Herod, uh, who submitted to the petition of Salome asking for John the Baptist's head. That day is commemorated on August 29th. So we see Mercury over here at the hind legs of Leo near the Alpha and Omega point on the ecliptic and the sun at the chest of Leo, the sickle being over here, typing the onset of the harvest and Hydra is positioned underneath Leo. So if we look on the other side of the ecliptic, there's another beautiful picture. We see Venus, a type of the beloved and morning star, promised to overcomers, is exactly at the chest of the groom portion in the constellation Gemini. 
and that is the location reflective of the rib of Adam where Eve was made from and in a like vein we are being made from the Lord having been pierced this is where he was pierced on the cross and the beloved his bride is coming from his death much like the disciple John's deep heart-to-heart -heart connection with the Lord, he, he was leaning on his chest at the Last Supper. And I recall how when Sister T. Renshaw mentioned the Venus uh, setting in one of her previous videos that the Lord, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, location matters, look at what is happening. So thanks, Sister. Um, we're going to continue. Here you have another picture of Venus, the side of the bridegroom in the constellation Gemini. Then we find Mars, a type of war situated exactly in between the knot of Pisces where the upright and the trodden down fish are tied to Cetus, the sea monster. And in the ancient depictions, Aries the ram is actually holding his, holding his paw over this ribbon because he is the one who's going to set the upright ribbon free. But at this point in time, Mars is situated in between these ribbons, and it is going to retrograde in this position as well. And based on earlier studies I did, I, I have concluded that this is a picture of this coming satanic uh, war on the fish, on the believers of God, but also a tying of the knot because this particular star in Pisces is reflective of the wedding knot in the phrase, the tying of the knot. And I believe it is pertaining to a red wedding, a dark counterfeit wedding um, as a dark mirror of our wedding unto heaven. The enemy is awaiting Satan to come down to be permanently in covenant with his disciples. So that is a type of red wedding where the world will be subjected to as well. Reflective of how uh, Barack Obama, the first beast, uh, during his last correspondent dinner, referred to that red wedding type. You can read more about that in the article over here. So then in the cattle fold, Cancer, we see the asteroid Vesta, reflective of the fire of the Magi, the threshold of the home, as well as the rector of the maidens, who uh, is in the manger in uh, the constellation Cancer. Neowise, meanwhile, is still visible, although with binoculars, is exactly in between the legs of Virgo. Just Next to the branch, the ear of corn, sorry, the ear of corn, spica, and the branch pointing to the sun coming down, S-O-N. So this is where Neowise is found in between the legs of Virgo. And what is being visualized in the heavens is both a type of a dry harvest that is indicative of the grain harvest in addition to a wet harvest, which is indicative to the coming gra uh, grape harvest. And you can read more about that over here. And as soon as the sun traverses Leo and ends up at the onset of the cup of wrath, just uh, above Hydra and underneath Leo, that is at the time of the fall equinox that is an indication that the Lord's wrath, the wine, the cup of indignation will be poured out. And this is visualized in this graphic. You see the sun moving forward on the ecliptic into Virgo, just above crater, the cup situated on top of Hydra. That is on September 22nd of this year. Uh, Uranus, a type of Enoch, and also a forerunner, is still in Aries. Uh, we reported on that in the previous article. Uh, recall that Enoch was taken on a seventh day for Jasher 336 before the flood. And we would expect the bride to also be taken before the onset of judgment. 
and on the eighth day the kings went to search those that followed him though both he and the ones close to them who had st stuck by enoch had all been taken so we find uranus underneath the star hamal in the constellation aries So here you find an overview of Torah calendar for this week and the next. You can see the name Kitavo already mentioned on this Sabbath. And if you go to Torah calendar and click on this number, you can see which portion in scripture is prescribed to be read. So the celestial narratives synchronize with the 50th week Torah readings. Note the number 50. Um, the title Kitavo means when you enter, meaning entry into the promised land. And they were scheduled to be read this Sabbath, Elul 9. The Israelites crossing over the river Jordan under Joshua's leadership after three days in camping and spiritual preparation, they were instructed for the priests to lift the Ark of the Covenant implying the salvation found in Jesus, the new covenant, over the water as a type of Noah's flood and the ark being lifted above judgment. So the priests, which are a type of the bride, they stepped into the water, but out by faith, and they went ahead of the people. We find that in Joshua 3, 11 to 14. So, as they entered into the water and stood in the midst of the water at full force during this time, then the waters receded and formed a wall next to them. And the people uh, were able to walk on dry ground, which is a picture of the bride preceding the worldwide rapture, the people's harvest. And afterwards, memorial stones were placed uh, by the appointed tribe leaders and the priests were carrying the ark, closing the ranks after all the people had crossed over. So this is also indicative of the sequence of events at the time of the rapture. So the New Testament teaches that during the church age of salvation by grace through faith, the spiritual body of Jesus is functioning much like the embodiment of the Ark of Noah and the Ark of the Covenant. So as a prophetic type, we can draw from this sequence that the bride functioning as kings and priests will likely cross over just as first fruits before the main body of people, the main harvest, and will actively ensure that all the fullness of the Gentiles ultimately cross over into the promised land. And this happened on a tenth day, in this case of the first month. So I believe it is a time clue for us to put in our hip pocket because Elul 10 is August 29 and 30. So here you see a rendition of how the priests carrying the ark entered into the water by faith and only then did the waters uh, subside and the Lord formed a wall of water at the upper stream of the river. So here in the article you find a summary of the 50th Torah readings entitled Kitavo. Uh, by clicking on the gallery you enter into the presentation and this is the complete Torah readings for this portion. It's from Deuteronomy 26 and Isaiah 60. And instead of me reading them to you, I invite you to do it yourself and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. So this is the Deuteronomy portion. This is the Isaiah 60 portion. And in the customs of the feast, it's derived from the Jewish Mishnah. You can read how the people were treated to an awakening blast uh, instructed by Moses and then a call to arise to bring their first fruits to the Levites and those are, that's a double picture of what we would expect at the rapture so this is the end of part one there's going to be another video with an explanation on the Torah readings